All right, now we're going to continue our discussion of radian measures. And like I said, there's probably going to be part three to all this because there's just so much to cover and I want to make sure you get this right. All right, first of all, there's a reason why I'm going to tell you this and, I, and the reason will become clear until probably either the end of this video or the beginning of the next one. All right, now, we already said that the circumference of a circle is equal to 2 pi r, and I explained in the last video how we got the 2 pi r. Alright, now, let's say we divide this circumference by 1 half. Okay, so, let's say I drew this out here. Okay, let's say I drew this out. And we now have the diameter of this great big circle. We have the diameter of this great big circle. Now, half of the circumference would be from this point right here from this point all the way up to this point this would be half of the circumference of the circle okay it'd be one super humongous arc alright now what I'm going to do here because I want to illustrate something I'm going to erase this little piece right here okay so now I've shown you half of the cir circumference of this circle alright so if 2 pi r is the circumference of the circle then pi r is half the circumference. Okay? Because if we take 2 pi r, r and we divide it by 2, we eliminate the 2, and all we're left here is with pi r equaling half of the circumference. Now, this is very important to remember. Not at this moment, but it will get very important as I continue this discussion. All right. Now, we already established that a unit circle, okay, will have a ratio. Okay, a unit circle has a ratio. Now, it says from geometry, the arcs that the angle subtends, okay, so we have an angle. Here's an angle right here, and it subtends this arc. See this angle right here? It subtends this arc. Okay, now, if an angle subtends an arc, the length of that arc is in the same ratio as the radius of the circle. So the length of this is in a ratio to this. Okay? And we showed uh, in the previous video that you can have a unit circle here with a arc length of 1 and a radius of 1. So that's a 1 to 1 ratio. Okay? Now not all, all arcs and circles and all that kind of stuff has a 1 to 1 ratio, but in a unit circle, if you're talking about a radian, you have an arc that's the length of 1 and a radius that's the length of 1. Okay? So, let's simplify things for a second here. Okay. We have a circle. Its radius is 1. And S here is also going to be 1 because we're going to be talking about a ratio of this arc to this radius. So we got S, well, okay, it's, got, it's, it's going to be in a ratio, but we're going to also say that we have another arc here, and it's S1. We don't know the length of this arc here, and we don't know the length of this radius right here. This radius could be far more than 1. It could be 3. It could be 4. It could be 5. Okay? And we don't know the length of this arc to this radius. So we're going to say, inasmuch as S is to S1, so is R equal 1. Okay? So we're going to make a ratio of ra this radius to this radius, and this arc length to this arc length. So S over S1 equals R over 1. Okay? Now what we're going to do next is we're going to multiply this S1 like this. So now we're going to have S equaling RS1. See that? S equaling RS1. Then we're going to divide both of these by R and when we do we eliminate this like that and then we have S over R equaling S1 over 1 which is exactly what we're trying to achieve and I'm going to show you the reason why in a little bit. Okay. We're going to first change S1 into a Greek letter. Okay? 
I'm going to change S1 into a Greek letter. So now we're going to say that this Greek letter, which represents S1, okay, the Greek letter which represents S, whoops, I'm not doing that right. The Greek letter, which represents S1, now equals S over R. Okay? Just like that. All right. And I bet I've got you thoroughly confused here. The reason we're doing all this is because when you're using a unit circle, it's pretty easy to find out radians from a unit circle. But if your circle is not a unit circle, you're going to have some problems finding radian measure. Now, I'm going to show you in my next video how to find a radian measure in a unit circle. Then I'm going to show you why we have to have this other formula. So stay tuned.